I uh, call the member James Shaw. Uh, Mr Speaker, um, I rise to offer the Green Party support for the standards accreditation bill being read a first time uh, and referred to Select Committee for consideration of submissions. I was lucky some years ago uh, I did a piece of work for the British Standards Institute um, as it was then exploring development of a new standard for ethical fashion. Um, in other words, uh, items of clothing that conform to fair trade, uh, organic cotton, non-chemical dyes, etc. And this was one of only several tens of thousands of standards that the British Standards Institute had developed and maintained uh, over time. The British Standards Institute is probably the world's leading institution uh, in this field and uh, I am sure will be an example that will be examined um, by those who are working on this bill. There comes a time when any piece of legislation should be reviewed to ensure that it's still fit for purpose uh, and each of the Standards Act and the Testing Laboratory Registration Act has been on the statute for uh, almost as long as I've been alive, 1972, 1988. Um, so it's pleasing that in 2012 the Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment took the initiative to undertake a review of those legislative provisions uh, and in the review uh, process undertook extensive consultation with stakeholders. So it did find that the current provisions were no longer fit for purpose and that change was required to the National Standards Body uh, in particular because it was not financially sustainable within its current business model and given its operating environment. It is hardly surprising uh, given, for example, that in, in a testing laboratory registration council accredited laboratory is now a requirement for over $20 billion of New Zealand's exports, which was something that probably wasn't foreseen in 1972 when its act was passed. The Green Party acknowledges that a well-functioning standard system must have sufficient flexibility to align with government priorities such as innovation and trade facilitation. However, we also would like to stress the point uh, contained uh, in this draft bill of keeping the actual process of developing standards independent and free from interference by ministers or ministries. That is essential to maintain the integrity of our standards and maintain public confidence both in New Zealand and in our trading partners uh, in our standards. In that regard, I think that the government has got the balance just about right with this bill by maintaining that the statutory independence of the new New Zealand Standards Approval Board, the New Zealand Standards Executive and the Accreditation Council from the Minister and the Ministry. Uh, one aspect that I would question is whether it's appropriate for the Minister of Commerce to appoint the entirety of the membership of the New Zealand Standards Approval Board, as the bill currently provides. While the board uh, will be required to be statutorily independent, having the Minister appoint all of its members, including the chairperson, could be seen to be giving rise to cronyism uh, and the perception of undue ministerial influence through ministerial appointments over the decisions and recommendations of the board. So perhaps some consideration should be given to having the sectors which use the um, or contribute to the standards appointing at least some of the membership of the board directly, rather than to have all of the appointments being made by the minister. Uh, that's an issue that I hope that the select committee uh, will address. The Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment reported back largely positive feedback from stakeholders in the development of the policy upon which the bill is based. The select committee process will have a further opportunity for stakeholders and for the wider public to have input into a necessary but could be seen to be quite complex piece of legislation. The Green Party is supporting this bill being referred to select committee. 